Hi, this is Chris Munn from Highline Guitars, and you're watching episode 52 of From the Luthier's Workbench. In the last episode, I concluded my two-part series on how to select a spray system for your workshop without spending a lot of money. But the one thing I didn't talk about was what products I'm actually shooting from my spray guns. And the reason I didn't talk about that was because the guns and the systems that I recommend can shoot pretty much anything that you're gonna that you ever want to run through your spray gun. You can use uh, nitrocellulose lacquer. You can use automotive urethanes. You can use water-based uh, finishes. Uh, it really doesn't matter. What it comes down to is getting the uh, material thinned properly and the spray gun adjusted correctly to spray whatever it is you're going to use. Well, in this episode, I thought it would be kind of cool to talk about specifically what I use because I think you'll find what I'm using is, is kind of interesting. It's not as traditional, and uh, I hope that when you uh, see what I'm using and how I'm using it, it might inspire you to try some, uh, a different approach, a slightly different approach to what you may be used to using when clear coating and, or painting and clear coating your guitar. So uh, let's get started. The best way to explain the different products that I use is to explain the process of using those products as they were applied to this guitar. This is uh, one that has been painted and clear coated and it's really ready for level sanding and then final buffing. So um, I'll start out by explaining uh, how I arrived at this point and what those products were that I used to do this. So the first thing is wood selection. If I know I'm gonna paint a guitar, I'm gonna use a wood that lends itself to being painted. I prefer to use a wood that has a closed grain structure so I don't have to fill the grain. That pretty much rules out mahogany and ash. Although I will paint those, I just have to use a, a different and slightly more time consuming process. And I'm not gonna get into that right now. I, I would rather just uh, explain the basis of what I'm spraying. So in this case, I used a, a, a wood, uh, I used alder for this, this body. And after cutting it out, routing it, carving the contours, I sanded it from about 80 grit all the way up to 220 grit. And after I finished with the 220 grit, I was ready to begin the process of applying the finish. And in this case, it starts by sealing the wood with a sanding sealer. And the sanding sealer that I use is just a uh, basic Minwax water-based sanding sealer. And what these sanding sealers are, the water-based ones, is typically just a heavy-bodied acrylic polymer. So you spray it down, the water evaporates, and what you have left is an, uh, this acrylic uh, polymer that's pretty similar to what you would find in, in an acrylic paint or an acrylic clear coat. The difference is, is it's formulated in such a way that it makes it very easy to sand. So I can spray two to three coats and, and thoroughly seal the wood. And the, the number of coats uh, may vary depending on the uh, specific piece of wood you have. The one area you have to be really conscientious of is around the cutouts where you expose end grain because that will soak up a lot of the, the sanding sealer. And you gotta make sure that it's sealing the wood thoroughly because if it doesn't, when you start to put the paint down, some of the paint is going to soak into the wood, some of the paint is going to sit on top of the wood, and when that happens, it uh, alters the appearance of that color. So you want it consistent. And I like to think of a uh, sanding sealer as a clear primer. It's priming the surface and getting it ready for paint. If, uh, if the wood that I'm using happens to be fairly dark, and I know that I'm going to be spraying a light color over it, one of the things I'll do is after I've sprayed a couple of coats of the sanding sealers, I'll pour some of this out into a separate container and then mix into it enough uh, acrylic white paint to uh, give the, the final coat a light, opaque white color. And that becomes the surface that I'm going to apply the paint on. Okay, so speaking of paint, the paint that I'm using, that I'm running through my spray gun, this is very different than anything you've probably seen before. Although I, I think I have talked about it in previous videos 
once or twice. But uh, when you see this, I know some of you out there are going to raise your eyebrows and think, well, what? You can't do that. But uh, I encourage you to, to stick with me on this. And I think uh, if you give it a try, you'll realize, wow, that, that really works pretty good. What I'm using is water-based acrylic craft paint. This is the stuff that you can buy at any of those big box uh, arts and craft stores like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Both those stores I've been into and they have uh, several aisles devoted to just these uh, type of paints. And they actually carry a number of different brands and the prices can range anywhere from, uh, I think it's 99 cents for their house brand all the way up to a couple of bucks for the, uh, the well-known brand names. This one in particular is called Folk Art. It doesn't really matter which brand you use. Uh, they're all pretty much uh, formulated very similar. The thing that's going to uh, probably um, make it the decision for you is what color you're after. Uh, they've got so many different options as far as color that no matter what it is you've got in mind, there's probably a color that will match what you're thinking of that's available right off the shelf. And if not, you can always you know, buy a couple of different colors and mix them together to achieve the tint that you're after. The only thing that I would encourage you to do, however, is regardless of what brand you buy, make sure it says multi-surface on the front of it. Uh, this multi-surface surface paint will adhere to just about anything, wood, plastic, glass, tile, metal, pretty much anything. And the reason why I prefer this is because remember how I said we put down that um, surface sealer because it's an acrylic polymer, it's basically a plastic. So it's a good idea to use a multi-surface paint so that you can be sure that it's going to adhere. And I've tested uh, a variety of different multi-surface brands and they all adhere extremely well uh, to just about any surface that I spray it onto. Now the one thing you'll notice when you get these is when you open it up, it's pretty thick. I mean, it's almost like toothpaste. And that's obviously too thick to spray. So what you have to do is you have to thin it down with some water. So what I do is in the same aisle where I get the paints, you can also buy empty bottles. And I'll buy a, a package of these. I think it comes six to a package. And then what I'll do is I'll pour some of the, the um, uh, paint out of the container uh, and into the empty container, usually about it, well, I've got a black mark here. That's about a quarter of the way, almost a third of the way. And then what I'll do is I'll add uh, roughly about a, t about a tablespoon of water. You don't want to add a lot. In fact, just add a few drops to begin with. Stir it up, shake it up, get it mixed in thoroughly, and then test it in your spray gun on some scrap uh, or on some cardboard and, and see how well it sprays through your gun and then um, how opaque it's going down. And if necessary, you can thin it out a little bit more or you can add a little bit more paint until you get it to where, you, uh, to where it's spraying really well. And what I did with this guitar is, I first I mixed up some red and I sprayed the entire top surface. It took about two coats to get thorough coverage. And uh, when I spray this stuff, I'll spray it and it usually takes about 15 to 30 minutes to dry, depending on temperature and depending on humidity. Uh, where I live, it tends to be on the uh, uh, quicker side, so usually in that 15 minute range. But if you want to speed it up, what you can do is you can spray the color and then set your sprayer down and grab a hair dryer. And then all you need to do is just you know, hold the hair dryer far enough away that you're not going to overheat the surface and just wave it back and forth really quick and it'll almost instantly dry the paint. Then you can spray your second coat. So really in just a short span of time you can uh, have your entire um, first color applied. And then what I did after that was I went back to spray the purple and that was sprayed on the back and on the sides and then as you can see I feathered it around the edges here and again I used the hair dryer just to get it to dry really quick and then applied a second coat and at that point I had thorough complete coverage the painting was done so 
Now, as I said before, you know, it takes that, that 15 to 30 minutes to air dry, and then you can dry it a lot faster with the hair dryer. However, it's important to understand there's a difference between when the paint is dry and when the paint is cured. When the paint is dry, you can touch it and you won't get any paint on your fingers and you won't ruin your finish. However, to reach um, its uh, maximum hardness, you need to let it cure. You'll notice when you first spray this kind of paint, when it dries, it has kind of that latex rubbery feel. You know, like when you paint a, a, a closet door with latex paint, it has that kind of rubbery feel. Well, after uh, it's been allowed to cure, and it takes anywhere from four to seven days to cure, depend again, depending on temperature and humidity. But once it's, it's cured out, that paint will go from that kind of soft, rubbery feel to a hard feel. It's, it's like a hard shell. And that's what you need to wait for before we go to the final step, which is to clear coat it. So, and now you'll notice when I, I never said anything about sanding between coats. You don't need to do that with uh, these water-based type paints because when you spray it down, uh, after it dries, even if you use the hair dryer, there's still that glycol, ethyl glycol uh, in the, the acrylic. So when you spray the next coat over it, it reactivates that and the two bond together. So you don't need to sand between coats when you're using these products. Once the paint is thoroughly cured, I'm ready to start applying my clear coat. And the product that I'm using is, this is a fairly new product. I think it's been out about a year. This is General Finishes Enduro Pre-Cat Lacquer. And it's a water-based clear coat finish. And what, what pre-cat means is they've added um, a catalyst to the, the finish so that it will cure uh, more thoroughly and result in a harder and more durable finish. And I've used quite a few uh, water-based lacquers, uh, acrylic lacquers before from several different uh, uh, manufacturers. I've used Hydro Coat Resistane and I've used Target Coatings EM6000. And those are all really good products. But this one in particular, this in, uh, General Finishes Enduro Pre-Cat Lacquer, I found it, once it's dried and thoroughly cured, it is much, much harder product. It has far better scuff and scratch resistant um, than the other products. Now like with uh, Target Coatings, uh, EM6000, you can add a crosslinker to it that they sell that will, um, it basically turns it into a pre-cat lacquer so that it will uh, cure more thoroughly and, and much harder and is, is much more resistant to scuffs and scratches and, and uh, chemicals. But this stuff comes already pre-mixed and is ready to go. And price-wise, I was really surprised at how affordable it is. So, um, yeah, definitely this is, I think this is gonna probably become my go-to clear coating finish. And what I'll do is I'll spray down the entire surface um, and I'm using my HVLP gun when I do that and I fill up the can and just leave it full so um, that's enough you know I think this is about a quart so it's it's enough to uh, thoroughly clear coat with a little bit left over so a gallon will actually is enough for uh, four, maybe five guitars. So what I'll do is I'll spray down a coat, and I start first thing in the morning. And I'll spray a coat, let it sit for an hour, come back, and I'll spray a second coat. And I'll continue that way through the day until I have sprayed a total of about five coats of the clear. Then I'll let, hang it up and let it dry overnight. The following morning I'll come back and I'll sand the surface with 600 grit sandpaper and I sand dry you don't wet sand uh, a water-based finish because if you do you reactivate the glycol that's still evaporating out instead you just dry sand and you I use a sterate uh, sandpaper a no-load sandpaper um, and I'll sand the surface get it completely smooth remove any runs drips any little lint dust spots or you know that sort of thing once I've got that done I wipe off the bot, uh, 
the body with a, a damp rag to remove any residue. Then I spray, as I did the day before, five more coats. Then I let it sit overnight and I repeat the process a third day. So total, I've sprayed about 15 coats, but bear in mind, I have been sanding every five coats to level it. So you're taking it down. And I'm not really sure what the film thickness is. Uh, it is fairly thin, but uh, it's not so thin that I have to worry a lot about sand through around the edges. Then once I have finished spraying that, that last session of clear coats, I'll hang it up and I'll let it cure. And I'm not exactly sure how long it takes to fully cure, but what I do know is that the general finishes Enduro uh, water-based lacquer will reach its um, maximum hardness after about seven days. So I definitely will let it sit a full week. If it goes longer than that, great. If not, I don't think it's that big of a, big of a deal. It's, it's gonna be at its maximum hardness. At that point, I will switch to 1200 grit sandpaper and I'll sand the entire surface and then I'm ready to buff it out. And uh, that's basically, in a nutshell, the products that I'm using to uh, paint and clear coat my guitars. So I hope that uh, makes sense to you. And, and of course, as always, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email or, or uh, put a comment below and I'll try to answer it for you. And uh, I'm gonna sign off and uh, get ready to start level sanding this guitar so I can get it polished and put together. So uh, we will talk to you in episode 53.